hello 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 guys welcome back to my channel guys i am so excited i just purchased well really i credited a new audiobook today it is obama's autobiography his new one a promised land i'm really really excited about reading this because i'm going to be dropping another video very soon about the 2008 obama candidacy and how i actually canvassed for him when i was in high school you heard that right literally back in 2008 16 year old nadge <laughs> walked around my neighborhood with signs and pamphlets and sign up sheets trying to get people to vote for obama um like a lot of my friends from my art school had done and um i remember going around in the suburbs that i grew up in and um Actually, no, this wasn't me. This was a group of my friends. They were taking McCain signs and, and taking them out of people's yards and throwing them, on, throwing them on the ground. You know, teenage delinquency. That was our teenage delinquency. So, woo, Obama 08. <laughs> um, I'm really excited about this book, guys. It's on the New York Times bestseller list. Um, we know that Spare was such a success. And I guess I'm just in the mood now for something like that. Usually, I definitely go with the classic books. Like, some of my favorites are Emerson, you know, Whitman, Jane Austen. I actually do like J.K. Rowling, despite some of her, you know, transgender, dubious transgender stuff that she said recently. But um, I'm really excited about this book, guys. Do you guys, are, has anybody read it? Like, is there anyone interested in this? Um, I'm going to be posting a series of videos about Obama, sort of like I've done with Harry and Meghan, because I find his and Michelle's journey to be a little similar in ways, you know, like they were really, really demonized by the far right for basically sticking up for humanitarian causes that would seem very, very, you know, surface level, things like advocate like the obamas we know they advocated for universal health care we know that they advocated for you know everybody to have a cell phone the obama phones just think about that um small businesses like climate crisis lgbtq rights advancement of colored people you know it's like it would seem like these things that people like the obamas like harry and megan like the kennedys the things that they advocate for would just be very surface level type stuff, but the world really, really vilifies them. And that right there, guys, it proves that evil just really does exist in the world. But, um, so the book is 29 hours and 10 minutes. And I want to say that Spare was the same. Like, I'm looking at my library in Audible. No, Spare was actually only 15 hours and 39 minutes. And I sped through spare in like, whew, I went through it fast, baby. Child, I went through spare probably in like three, four days. I'm not going to lie. I don't even know how that is possible. Like, what, what was I doing? Was I like not even looking at my husband? Was I not even calling my mother? Was I not taking showers? Was I not talking to friends? Like, <laughs> I, I was, I was ramming through that thing like a night train in the south baby like wow 15 hours and I got through that in less than a week anyway um I feel like it'll probably take me a week to get through a promised land for Obama so sometime next week let's maybe check back in and I will tell you guys what I thought but um I will also be posting a video perhaps before that if I have the bandwidth talking about when I did go door to door for the Obama presidency back in 2008. And um, aside from his initiatives, you know, that he took up, which the far right has always been very critical of. And, you know, I get it. As a centrist, I understand it. I, I don't agree with everything that the Democratic Party does. You know, if you just agree with everything that a party does, does it really mean that you are trying to understand the argument, trying to understand the conversation that's going on and be active in it? Or does it mean that you're just complacent? So I get that. But the amount of criticism that he's received, very similar to Harry and Meghan, makes me question if it's if it's not something more, you know, if it's not clearly just racism or xenophobia or, um, well, 
xenophobia. I don't know. I, I'm, t- I'm speaking mostly on American people, but we know that he received criticism from around the world. So I guess it could be xenophobia. But me personally, I just remember that time, guys. I'm 31 years old. And, um, you know, Obama's presidency came when I, you know, was a little bit older and mature, but still not an adult, you know, like I was young and in high school and thank goodness that my parents sort of cultivated, um, a loving and caring environment for me and also expected me to, you know, really have a mind of my own to go out and do the research on my own. They never really pushed anything on me, but more so wanted me to do the research to come up with um, a decision on my own of what I thought. And I just think back on 2008, and I think back to just seven years before that, when 9-11 happened. And I'm going to post a video um, entitled Where I Was When 9-11 Happened, because something that you find with millennials is no matter where they were, if they were older than, say, like, five or six years old when 9-11 happened, they know exactly where they were, exactly what they were doing, maybe what they were wearing. And um, because it was so disheartening to watch, it was, I, I just feel nauseous even thinking about looking at that TV in 2001 and seeing those planes crash into that building. It really just makes you, nauseous it makes you nauseous it makes you want to vomit and to see what the UK is doing right now how it is like giving itself a pat on the back for being racist and xenophobic you can't do that you can't do that it has terrible implications you know if you want to look at anything as a proof point for that look at post 9-11 US you know Like, the world is trying so hard to talk some sense into the UK, and it's not listening, but I remember exactly where I was when 9-11 happened. And I'm not going to give too many spoilers, because I'm going to make another video on that, but I was 11 years old, I was with my mom, and I know exactly where I was, and I, I remember vividly that feeling. And I remember that feeling from 2001 all the way up until 2008, you know, going from 11 years old, 10 years old, to 16 or 17 years old. I remember that. And I remember just how the entire political weight between those five or six years was... It was full of trauma. It was like we were traumatized as a nation. It's something that brought us together as a nation, you know, just the way that a funeral can sometimes bring a dysfunction family together. It was something that brought many people of many backgrounds and many races together. But it took a long time to be okay. And arguably, it's not okay because we still see the lasting effects of two thousand of, of, of September. September 11, 2001, but just remembering going through 9-11, then a recession, and the world being so behind Bush, and then the world very quickly backtracking on that, saying, okay, maybe that wasn't such a good idea, and there being such a lack of hope And then Obama coming in and really encouraging people to be hopeful for a future, to show us that we could be resilient and we could be our own solution providers. I just think back to the energy of that time. And as someone who has lived through, what is it, (laughs) four different presidencies, Clinton, Bush, Obama, Trump, five, and Biden. As an American, which I live in France, and um, I feel like France has, in ways, a similar um, journey, but not completely the same. Pas tout à fait complètement la même chose. But um, through that,
through those five presidencies, specifically between George Bush, George Bush Jr., and President Barack Obama, um, there was hope. There was hope. And so people criticizing him, you really have to ask, why are you criticizing him? Just like Harry and Meghan. People who are truth tellers, truth seekers, people who want to unite, often people try to knock those people down. But like I said in my last video, guys, we cannot choose to be silenced. Anyway, I'm going to get off of here. Um, it is lunchtime. <clears throat> I basically just took a little break. Um, I've been drowning in copy decks for what feels like three <laughs> million years. And um, I got to get back to work, but I'm going to have a quick bite of lunch first. And I just wanted to get on here and, and tell you guys about my new book because I'm really excited about it. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. If you haven't already, please do go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. Click the bell so you always know when I post a video and I'll see you soon. Okay, bye.